those viewers of my The Creative One Mobile channel at youtube.com slash The Creative One Mobile, you may have seen that I uploaded a video regarding the Macintosh Color Classic maybe a week or so ago um, that I recently got from a neighbor, which I'm very fortunate for. It's a Macintosh Color Classic running OS 7. I have the keyboard and mouse and everything, but I was just making my first boot video, and unfortunately I saw that dreaded floppy disk icon with a question mark on top of it. Which basically means that it does not have a startup disk, unfortunately. Which I find odd, because my neighbor said it has OS 7 installed and he doesn't know what's on there. Uh, but he knew the OS was installed. Maybe there's a problem, maybe you guys can help me in the comments. But, for the time being, as promised, I'm still going to make a video on the Macintosh Color Classic. Unfortunately, I cannot show any software for obvious reasons, as just mentioned. I'm going to go over a basic overview of all the hardware. Um, not, not not the insides, because I'm not really going to open this thing right now. I don't really I don't really feel comfortable doing that just yet. Um, I want to get to know the system first. But um, I'll show the overall like you know design, keyboard, and mouse, because I did find a few interesting things to share with you guys. So without further ado, let's do it. This is the Macintosh Color Classic. First off, let's show off the classic Macintosh logo. There you go, classic rainbow logo with the Color Classic branding on the side. I mean, on the uh, bottom. Right here we have your standard volume controls, very interesting, and brightness controls, which nowadays are both integrated both into the keyboard, so that's something interesting to keep in mind. Your standard 3.5 and, and um, floppy drive, unfortunately, there's no floppy drive in there, I mean no floppy disk in there, but um, yeah, nothing really more to say about that, because I could really use one right now, but that's okay, maybe one day. Um, here's our monitor. I think it's like 10 inch or something like that. Um, I'll put all the specs below this video for those interested. A built-in microphone, which is very interesting, considering my iMac G3 even has a built-in microphone. I just find that interesting because even back in the days of Mac OS 7, which is over there on the, on the Macintosh Color Classic, they still had pretty cool features such as a built-in microphone. And that obviously was brought over to the days of the G3 Macs. For those wondering, I do have a full video on this, a full upgrade video. Actually, two videos because it's two parts showing you guys how to upgrade this. That was a very frustrating video, but it was fun. But anyway, this video is about the Macintosh Color Classic, so let's get back over here and show this thing off. Down here, we have a little QuickTime logo. It's pretty cool. Here we have the old kind of cord where, where it um, looks like a phone cord. It's a cable connecting the keyboard to the back of the Macintosh Color Classic, which I'll show in a second. Now what's interesting about this keyboard is, check this out, I'm not sure if this was a standard back then or if, if, or if it was just Apple's way of doing things their own way, but check this out. The arrow keys, <clears throat> excuse me, were actually on the same row, whereas nowadays we have the standard, um, you know, up on the top and then left, bottom, and right on the bottom. Very interesting. By the way, look at the contrast in design. Got these thick keys, and nowadays we have this chiclet design. I love it. It's really amazing how far technology has come. Another thing I found interesting is the inclusion of a power button on the keyboard, just like the MX G3. And here is the boot up. Again, don't expect anything too exciting because I do not have the floppy disk, unfortunately. But I can still show you guys that it really does work perfectly fine, though. This screen looks great. There's the mouse cursor, which works perfectly. And then in a second, we'll see the little disc icon pop up. And there it is. Question mark. Apparently, it cannot find the startup disc. Another interesting thing worth pointing out is even back then, yes, I'm going to say that a lot in this video, even back then, Apple still used the easy access ports. For instance, to plug the keyboard into the Macintosh Color Classic itself, you take a cable from the keyboard to the back of the Macintosh Classic. And the same thing for the mouse, just like today's standards, um, we have a USB, not USB, I'm sorry. We have the um, old input, I believe, what, is this called PS2, PS2, something like that, on the side of the keyboard and then going to the mouse. And here is the classic mouse. One button, just like all of Apple's mice today. Obviously, this does not have multi-touch like the uh, Magic Mouse does, which I'm a big fan of. And I'm back. I had to switch batteries in my camcorder. Anyway, on the bottom of the mouse here, we have the classic trackball. 
um, that we all love, right? No, not really. And nowadays, we have laser tracking. This is a great mouse. Look at this. Check out the curves. I always say this looks like alien technology. It's pretty amazing. Let's go to the back of the Macintosh Color Classic. Get this stuff out of the way. And I should also note this does have a handle up top. As Apple once said in a keynote, never trust a computer you cannot lift. Or something to that effect. I don't know if that's an exact quote, but you get the idea. Down here we have your standard power and your power button. I can turn that off now that the system's off. We have your standard input down here for a keyboard. Again, I can put a mouse back here if I wanted to. Printer, uh, modem, um, and all. And this is for um, accessories. I don't know if that means external hard drive because I read that you can boot from an external disk, which is interesting. Um, I'll have to do uh, you know a little bit of research. Also, I should mention that I switched to the Mac in 2004, so all this old hardware is definitely new to me. So I apologize if I get, if I get any of this wrong. And um, as always, you guys can just say so in the comments if I say anything wrong. And here's your microphone input and volume input. And here, that's actually blocked off. Um, maybe that was changed in a future design or previous design. Who knows? And I believe in the manual, if you squeeze these two things down, the back door comes off. There you go. You have access to the logic board and anything else you need to upgrade. Which I think it's pretty interesting. And it goes pretty deep in there. You can see kind of far back. It's kind of dark, but you guys get the idea. It's pretty cool stuff. On the side here, we have your vents for airflow. And then the other side should have a vent as well. Yep, there it is. And I think that's really it, guys. I really apologize. I was really, really hoping this video would be more exciting. But again, unfortunately, I do not have a startup desk. But I um, at least wanted to show you guys, you know, the, you know, a basic overview, I guess. Um, down here, I should also mention that this isn't very exciting, but we do have little um, little levers you can pull out for a keyboard stand to put it at a better angle. I don't know if you guys even care about that, but I guess it's worth mentioning. And I guess that's it. There is the keyboard. I'll flip that back over. Your standard one button mouse. Look at this. Compare the days of OS 7 versus the days of OS 10, 10.6. And there it is, the Macintosh Color Classic. If I do find a startup disk, I will definitely do a first boot for you guys. I can promise you that if I do get a startup disk. Perhaps I'll get one off eBay. Or perhaps one of you guys have one that I'll be willing to buy it from. So let me know in the comments. And of course, as always, email me at davidthefranco.gmail.com or techsocial.com slash contact. Again, I really want to boot this thing for you guys. Um, I feel kind of bad that I promised it on my mobile channel. But it's not my fault I can't boot it. Um, so hopefully that will change in the future. It's up to you guys, so let me know. And as always, check out my uh, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff's under the video. And check out the Tech Social Gallery at techsocial.com slash gallery. And if you're interested in web hosting, which is what Tech Social is hosted on, go to techsocial.com slash squarespace. Again, everything's under the video. You guys know I love my shameless plugs. And uh, I guess that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll be seeing this beauty booted again soon. And I'll see you guys next time.